Hey, we're recording. All right, well, so in this exciting episode of Tim Time Projects, hello everybody, I'm Tim, and uh, we're gonna leave some of the radios behind. This is gonna be great. We're gonna go on a field trip and we're gonna look at some elements I bought for a bird meter. Uh, it's just, I mean, you'll be on the edge of your seat through the whole thing. It's fantastic. Got these three elements for $10 each, $10 each. So uh, if you know anything about bird meters, you know that's kind of unheard of and not standing. So I didn't know if they worked or not. It was a marketplace find. I bought them. Let's see if they work. All right, well, for those of you that don't know, what is a bird meter? Well, this is a bird watt meter. Uh, it's kind of considered the the industry industry standard for watt meters. You'll see these, you know, all the big radio guys and ham operators and, and anyone who can afford them go for this. Uh, it's an analog readout, and they have these this plug right here it goes in the front, and you can change this plug. I don't know if you can read it. You can change these plugs for your different parameters you want. You can use the same meter for everything from, I think it's like 2 megahertz to 2 gigahertz. Uh, and various amounts of power. All you do is change this. Whereas with a regular with a regular SWR meter like something like this, this is only good for uh, the HF range, which is what, 3 to 30 megahertz. And... It goes to, well, we got 2,000 watts. Uh, they're not really serviceable. This item here, you can send it out. You can have the meter calibrated. They also can calibrate these, or at least check that make sure that these are within the, the range. These are expensive. They're very, they're very durable. Uh, you can tell it kind of looks... It looks, I think these have looked the same for 50 years. They haven't changed. They come with different options. You can different different types of ends on them, or you can buy adapters. This right here, this is an aftermarket device that came with this that allows me to read peak. So a lot of meters, well, most meters don't come with a peak reading. So if you're looking to see your peak reading, it won't hold the scale long enough. So if you get a deflection, it won't hold it long enough for you to see a peak. In other words, if I'm speaking and you're going by my voice, without the peak on, this would just find a place down here to level out. But if I turn peak on, it would go up to the peaks of my voice and hold there for a couple seconds so that you can get a look at what your peak envelope power would be. And this, this particular, this is an aftermarket get up here. This particular thing also gives me, I believe, a times two and a times five multiplier. So these are very expensive. These uh, these elements are at least a hundred bucks a piece, uh, and and that's probably the used price. Um, so you can have something like this. Of course, don't expect the same kind of accuracy you're going to get with one of these. And again, this is an aftermarket thing, so I, I think that your your meter accuracy uh, or how do I want to say calibration probably goes all downhill once you do that this does this device comes with a uh, a, a self calibration mode to it where you can you can set it uh, but I don't personally look for this to be uh, I don't look for this to give me a hundred percent accurate reading if I'm pushing a hundred watts and it's going up here in the scale somewhere to me that's close enough. I don't sit there and look at it and try and say, oh, that's actually only 98 watts. I think if you wanted to do that, you would go digital. Uh, one of the nice things about this, too, if you wanted to check your standing wave ratio or your reflected power, you see this little arrow here. So one side you would have your antenna connected. The other side you would have your radio connected. And this would tell you your forward power. You just spin that around and it pops. It tells you which you point to which way the, which way the RF would be going. So... It goes this way, and then if I want to see if my meter is, or my antenna is in, uh, within SWR range, now I would look at the reflected power, and I would key the mic, and of course, reflected power, you want as little as you can get. So that's kind of a, a nice, quick, easy check you can use this for. Uh, 
I think that's all I can say about these. They're nice, they're expensive. Ken gets to be one of these things where you really want to get a, mer a bird meter and you get one and then you realize now I got to get all these elements. So uh, that's what leads us on to the to the rest of this. Some of these meters do come with this option as a factory setting where it's just the peak. It's, it's not the times two and times five multiplier. It's just the peak reading. And I believe that's a bird. This is a bird 43. I think they call it like a bird 43 peak. Um, so anyhow, that's just a, a little breakdown of a bird. If you always see them and wonder what the heck's a bird or why do people want them? Uh, these right here, this hole you're looking at right here, that's to store an extra element in. Uh, all right. Oops. So, oh, one other thing I do want to add, it's called a, tr I believe a true line. This, this line, the input and output, it goes through, and this has no mechanical connection to anything, as you can see. It just kind of attaches in there. And uh, this, this when, when you put it in the circuit, it'll be almost completely invisible to, to the circuit. There's uh, very, very little, I think almost no parasitic drain whatsoever on the circuit, like you would have on a regular meter that would take a little bit of the power and use, and there's the cat's ear, take a little bit of the power and, uh, for the swing needle. The, sw the meter swings uh, so that's another reason I think that a lot of people go with with this and that they're used in the industry all right back to the exciting video so today I picked up some elements for my bird a uh, 10 watt 400 to a thousand megahertz 100 watt 10 to 250 megahertz and a 10 watt 100 to 250 megahertz I'm sorry it was a 100 watt 100 to 250 and a 10 watt 100 to 250 megahertz so I want to see if they work so let's give them a shot well I forget to mention the best part they were ten dollars each so you know even if they don't work you have to buy bird elements for ten dollars each that's like finding diamonds out in the parking lot. Okay, don't mind the background. Here I have a ICOM V82. It's a two meter radio. And I want to test its power output to uh, this meter right here. So I'll zoom you into that. That's high power. So on the 20 watt scale We're showing oh, 2.5 watts. That doesn't sound right. Let's look at it on the 5 watt scale. Well, that seems that would be about 2.5 watts. That's half the half the deflection. I've never checked the output of this before. I thought this was supposed to be at 7 watts output. Alright, well anyhow, we're going to check it against the bird meter. And see what we get. Alright, so here we go with this. That's a uh, 100 to 250 megahertz, one, 10 watt. So if that's 10 watt, this is saying about 1. Oh, sorry, it's saying about 2. Because you move the decimal point on the 100 over. This is saying about 2 watts. Okay. So we do know that that slug's working. How accurate, I don't know, but we know it's working. Now here I have a hundred. A hundred slug. Same test. Let's see. 
Well, it does move. So that would be 10, 5, so it, that looks close to just under 2 watts. Now the funny thing is about this radio is, I don't know what the shape the battery is, and these ICOMs have no battery indicator, it just all of a sudden quits working. So that could very well be the issue here. But this is the only low power 2 meter. So let me connect it to a 2 meter radio. Okay, so here we go on a. Uh, make like a little now. On a Linko. So a Linko on 2 meters into a dummy load. It's on the 200 watt scale. So it's going up to near near 50, probably about 40 watts. 40. We'll just try it on the 20 watts because it's going to pay it, I'm sure. Yeah, we're not going to do that. <coughs> so let's see, 200. 25, 35, 40. Yeah, it's just, just near 40. There you go. Now let's look at it also, while we're here, on the 440 band. Here goes the 440 band, same test, same setting. That looks like it's going about 25 watts. All right. Go back. We'll switch. We'll throw the bird in and see if these these slugs work. Well, if I stand here like this, we're on the 146 megahertz. So that's. Oop! I'm going for reflected. I had to turn the leads around. Here's the forward. Just under 40 watts. So that's probably pretty close. I gotta set power level, I gotta set power level to low and test the other slugs. Alright, here we go with the 10 watt slug on two meters. That's shown. Well, probably about four to five watts. I'll swap that out. We're gonna try the. This is the UHF slug, and then we'll put the other meter back in, and we'll check UHF low power operation. Hey, dot. There's low power on UHF. That again. So what I say? That's a 10 watt slug, so that's probably about one watt. Oh no, I'm sorry, two watts on UHF. All right, so on the five watt scale, which is the lowest scale down here. Looking to see about two, which would be right about there. We're on UHF still. So about two and a half. Okay. We're showing just over two, I believe, on the bird. So let's try the VHF. Okay, here's the VHF scale. And that way we're seeing a little more than four, between four and five. And that we're showing right about four. So there's the Alinko that I was doing the test with. You've seen that in, I think, a different video I did. It's an Alinko DR605. Uh, no big deal to watch me push the button. The main thing was just to see if these bird uh, elements work. And all in all, I'd say I'm pretty happy with them. They uh, they do what, they, what they're supposed to do. I, 
I'm not really testing for accuracy. I think as long as I get ballpark, I'm pretty good. All right, well, you probably don't even need the rest of your seat because you sat on the edge of it the entire time. Uh, probably as satisfied that they work as I am, hopefully. And uh, thanks for watching. Come back again, and we'll make a longer one next time. This is just a short one to share something I found. They're out there.